as we all know, the prevalence of diabetes is increasing. And today we have crossed 10% of the prevalence in India. And within a few years, we'll be the capital in the world for diabetes in India. Previously, there were few patients in the locality, but nowadays we can see the entire family or most of the family members are suffering from diabetes mellitus. To unlock this chaos of diabetes in India, we have with us Dr. Ghansham Agrawal with us today. I, Ashwin Kotamkar, on behalf of MacLeod's Pharmaceuticals, welcome Dr. Ghansham Agrawal. Sir, as a very well-known endocrinologist in India, and currently he is practicing at Lucknow, Uttar Pradesh. I welcome you, sir, on behalf of MacLeod's. Sir, how relevant is glycemic variability in your clinical practice? And how does impact the patient's journey from a morbidity and mortality perspective? Yeah, it's a really very relevant question. So before going to that, I will just tell the difference between the HbA1c and the glycemic variability. You know, HbA1c is the gold standard from the very beginning, but it tells the last three months average sugar control. And the glycemic variability, the day-to-day -day glucose level in the blood, whether it is going the uh, below dangerous level or going very high. So we definitely fix a level like 70 to 150. So most of the time means 70% this glucose remain in the, uh, during this value and below 70, less than 5% we expect and above 150, 160, we expect less than 25%. So there is a study which have shown that uh, uh, if the glycemic variety increases, uh, means uh, uh, values going above 150, uh, 60 and below, then the mortality and morbidity increases. There are more risk of microvascular and macrovascular complications. Uh, whenever there is a uh, mean value remain between the uh, target range, there is a decrease in uh, microvascular complications. So definitely now we are uh, looking both the same HBNC value and glycemic variability. Okay. So the next question is, Various studies like Optima study, Teddy study, and various others have shown a reduction in glycemic variability with DPP-4 inhibitors. How does this evidence impact the patient care? Yeah, as I'll, I already told that glycemic variability is less, then the outcome is better. So now we are looking one more parameter whenever we decide medicine. So suppose we are using gliptins. So we want to take the gliptins, which is having the... Uh, less glycemic variability means most of the time uh, glucose remains in the normal range and their excursion will be less. So there is a study, Optima study, in which they have compared between the vildagliptin and the cetagliptin. So they have seen that the patient after giving vildagliptin, they are having a very good time in range in about 25% better result. While in the cetagliptin, there is only 10% that was not significant. Likewise, MAGE is also better with the vildagliptin. So vildagliptin is preferable because of the less glycemic variability. So outcome is better. If we talk about the TADI study, in this study is very nice study. They have taken 30 patients in the placebo and 30 in the tel telnigliptin group. And, uh, and the, they have followed for 24 weeks. And after that, they have seen that in the telnigliptin group, there is a HBNC reduction of 0.8%. That is quite significant. While in the placebo, just 0.08%. And if we talk about the glycemic uh, variability, excursion of glucose level, more than 200 and 250, that was quite less with the telnicliptin. In comparison to placebo, results is better 80%. So again, uh, because there is less excursion, there is a less chance of macrovascular complications and less chance of microvascular complications. Okay. So the next question is, the latest ADA 2022 guidelines have taken a more broad stance than previous guidelines on first-line pharmacotherapy. In clinical practice, are there any patient subsets who will benefit from DPP-4 inhibitors as first-line therapy? Yeah, it's a really very debatable question. But as a guideline suggests, one has to go with metformin. So one of the patients who is not able to tolerate metformin, first thing, so then we can forward the, uh, this gliptis. Another subset of patients who are having CKD, nephropathy, or cardiovascular uh, complications are high risk. They have to go definitely for the SGLT2 or DPP uh, GLP1 inhibitor. 
So patients who are not able to uh, tolerate metformin, not having CKD or CVD, these are the appropriate patients where, where we can start with the DPP-4 because the results are quite good, 0.8% reduction of HbA1c, they are weight neutral. And if we talk about the risk of hypoglycemia, that is also very much less, almost negligible. So these group of patients where there is mildly obese, normal weight, and not able to tolerate metformin, these are the uh, definitely good patients for uh, DPP-4, in my opinion. Okay. And sir, uh, viltagliptine, which is uh, previously it was twice daily, uh, dosing was there and nowadays the once daily sustained release formulation is there. So in your clinical practice, how effective and safe the sustained release formulation will be? Yeah, this is also very good for the patient point of view because you know, nobody wants to take too many pills. So whenever you get an option of getting an instead of two pills, you just take one pill. If the pharmacokinetics is also at par and HbA1c reduction is also at par in various studies. So advantage of single pill, uh, the patient really accept this medicine uh, quite well. So in my practice, I'm quite uh, allowed using this medicine. Okay. And sir, uh, according to you, what would be the advantages to the patient if we combine DPP-4 inhibitor with an SGLT2 inhibitor? Yeah, again, this combination is very good because both the drugs works on the different pathway. And uh, the combination of this drug, if we are using alone or with metformin, there is no risk of hypoglycemia, almost negligible. And secondly, we are having advantage of CV protection and nephro protection with the SGLT2 and beta cell protection with uh, DPP4. So here we are getting very much a triple advantage, in fact, without hypoglycemia and HbA1c reduction of up to 1.5%. So I think this combination is quite a good uh, for a number of patients. Thank you, sir. Thank you for sharing the clinical pearls from your end. And it was an honor for us. So this was Dr. Gansham Agrawal from Lucknow, Uttar Pradesh with us today. He has discussed with us the diabetes and its management with the help of sustained release Bildagliptin formulation. We'll come back with you in future with more such medical insights from stalwarts of diabetology. Thank you. Insights from the world's best medical minds. You are watching the right doctors.com.